The material we're talking about today can make or break your day on the river. It's absolutely key in getting your flies to the right depth, which in turn, it's gonna put more fish in the net. My name is Alex and I'm part of the Team Her Adventures Fly Co. And this is module three of our beginner fly tying masterclass. In the last two sections, we talked about hooks and thread. Today, we're gonna dive into beads. And specifically, we're gonna talk about the four features of fly tying beads. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to rock and roll. Let's do this. All right, so here I've got two pheasant tails. Even though they were tied with the exact same materials and the exact same techniques, you're gonna notice a big difference right off the bat. And that's that bead. And so the question is, why would I tie a fly with a bead or why would I tie it without one? And so to answer that question, let's talk about two scenarios you might run into out there on the river. All right, scenario number one, it's springtime, the water's warming up, and there's a big blue winged olive hatch going on. You've got mayflies rolling across the water's surface. You've got emergers happening. The fish are going nuts. And so because of that, they're hanging out in the upper half of the water column. All right, scenario number two. It's starting to get colder. We're running into the winter months. And those fish, they start to snuggle down there near the bottom. They're not moving much and there's not a lot of bug activity. And so clearly we've got two different strike zones going on. In the first scenario, it's the upper half of that water column. And in the second scenario, it's that bottom half. And so for scenario one, I'm probably gonna opt for that unweighted nymph. I want it to be able to hang up there in the upper water column. I want it to get right in front of those fish. And if I do that, they're gonna smack it. But if I throw that same nymph on for scenario two, I'm probably not gonna get the same result. Those fish aren't gonna cruise all the way up into the upper water column when they're trying to conserve their energy. And so for that scenario, I'm gonna need to get deep and I'm gonna need to get deep real quick. And so when I tie on a bead to a fly, it's literally adding weight to that fly, which is gonna allow it to sink deeper and sink faster. And so hopefully I can tie on that heavier pheasant tail. It's able to get down there deep right in front of that fish's face and he decides it's dinner time. And so as the angler and new fly tire, you're able to decide which flies are gonna go in your box. And so it not only pays off to have a bunch of different patterns, but a bunch of different weights, because then you'll be prepared for any situation that you might encounter out there on the river. And so now that we understand why beads are important, let's dive into their four main features. All right, feature number one, material. So what's it made of? There are two main materials that beads are made of, brass and tungsten. So brass beads have a moderate sink rate. They do add weight to your fly, it does sink faster, and it's gonna get to the bottom eventually. But if you compare that to tungsten, tungsten has a very fast sink rate. It's gonna get down real quick. In fact, I even took a little bit of a deep dive and found some dedicated, maybe a little nerdy anglers that wrote an article about this and they actually used the density and a couple of equations and figured out that tungsten beads could potentially sink up to three times faster than brass beads. But as you might've guessed, those brass beads, they are definitely a lot less expensive than those tungsten beads. And so I would consider brass beads the standard bead. A lot of the classic flies that both you and I love, they're tied with brass beads. And then tungsten beads, they're definitely growing in popularity. You can tie any of those classic patterns with a tungsten bead, and it's gonna sink faster than it would with a brass bead. And those Euro style patterns, they're almost always tied with tungsten beads. But before you just decide to give up brass beads for good and go purely tungsten, let's talk about some best practices with both. And so like we talked about before, you're trying to get that fly into the ideal strike zone. You're trying to get it to where those fish are hanging out. And so you're trying to find this balance of getting down deep, but not too deep, right? You don't wanna snag up on the bottom every single cast. And so with brass beads, you're going to be able to get it down in the water column. And it's great for shallow or slower moving water. 
But on the flip side, if you've got some really fast moving riffles or some pocket water, or if you've got a really deep pool and you need to get it all the way down to the bottom, tungsten beads are probably the way to go. And so I wouldn't say it's tungsten versus brass or brass versus tungsten. Each of them have their pros and cons, but I would say let's use both of them as a tool for different applications to catch more fish. And then just as a little side note, there are attractor beads. So not all beads are made to help the fly sink faster. And just as an example, we've got glass or plastic. So they're lightweight, they don't affect the sink rate, and all they do is add shape or color to the fly. So you can see this little midge here, it's tied with a glass bead. That could represent an air bubble as a midge is emerging, or give a little bit of shine that attracts fish. All right, let's talk about feature. Number two. So the majority of beads have two different shapes. You've got Cyclops and you've got slotted. So you can see here that the front looks pretty similar. You've just got a small circular hole, but where they differ is the back. So here on the Cyclops, we've just got a bigger circular hole. And on the back of the slotted bead, you've guessed it, we've got a slot. And so Cyclops beads are your standard bead shape. That's what you're gonna use for most standard hooks. The slotted beads are mostly used for jig hooks. It's gonna allow you to easily slide it on and it's gonna sit properly on that jig shaped hook. Now there are other shapes that are mostly used for streamers. You've got cone heads, you've got dumbbell eyes, you've got fish skulls. Like most fly tying materials, you can kind of dive into the weeds here. But all of your nymph patterns are gonna call for either a cyclops or a slotted bead. All right, feature number three, and be sure to stick around for feature number four because it's probably the most confusing for beginner fly tires. But number three, color. So the most common bead colors are gold, copper, and nickel or silver. I've seen it called both ways. And so most of your standard fly recipes, they're gonna call for these colors. But people have gotten really creative and have created some awesome flies that catch lots of fish using different colored beads. And so you can find beads in pretty much every color under the sun. But a few of my favorites, you've got black nickel, fluorescent orange, fluorescent pink, and there are even matte beads out there that have little speckles of different colors. So a bunch of different options out there. You can get quite creative in the color department. All right, the last of our features which is probably the most confusing for beginner fly tires. Feature number four, size. And so here I've got a bag of beads from one of our fly tying material packs. Now, if you look closely, you can see it's got the color on there, copper, it's got the material on there, tungsten, it says Cyclops, and how many beads there are, 13 pack. But above all that, you've got the size. So 1 8 inch or 3.5 millimeters. And so this is where beginners can often get tripped up, but it's actually quite simple. That is the same measurement, it's just in two different units. So you've got millimeters and you've got inches. It's the same as kilograms or pounds, or kilometers and miles. You've got the metric system and the imperial system. And so just to show you an example, here I've got my calipers and I'm going to measure the exact same bead. And so I measure the bead, and it says 3.51 millimeters. Now, if I just hit the little button that changes the units, it's gonna show me the inches in a fraction. Boom, one eighth of an inch. So it's the exact same bead, it's the exact same size, it's just two different units of measurement. And so where the confusion usually happens is different companies use different units. So one company might use inches, one company might use millimeters. The super helpful companies, they use both. And so to help you out as a beginner, we've got this nifty little cheat sheet. So in the left column, you've got the diameter in inches. In the middle, you've got the diameter in millimeters. And on the right, we've got approximate hook sizes that those beads pair with. But you're about to roll your eyes because I'm gonna tell you that sometimes you'll buy a pack of hooks and sometimes you'll buy a pack of beads and you'll put them together and they won't work out that bead doesn't quite slide onto the hook like you need it to. And so just a little bit of friendly advice, it might take some trial and error to figure out what hooks and beads pair with each other 
and which ones you like. Now we are trying to actively solve this problem as we build out our fly tying catalog here at VFC. But if you don't wanna deal with the trial and error and you just want a quick fix, you might wanna check out our VFC tying packs because we've done the trial and error for you. Included in the packs are hooks and beads and we've tested out those beads and they slide on those hooks. And then my last little bit of advice, what's so great about fly tying is it allows you to use your creativity. And so sometimes I might use that same size 18 hook to tie up a zebra midge, but I'll tie one up with a big bead, a medium bead, and a small bead. And so now I have different options when I'm out there on the river and fish are going nuts after midges. And so this comes back full circle. The whole purpose of beads is to get that fly to the ideal depth so that you can catch more fish. As always, if you have any follow-up questions, be sure to leave them in a comment below. In the next section, we're gonna clarify the confusion surrounding all the other materials. Wire, hackle, feathers, hair, foam, and much more.